Okay, I'm doing this video today to show how a five-speed manual transaxle works. I've got this, uh, the innards, if you will, from a five-speed transaxle uh, just mounted on this 3D print. Um, so it's a little bit more exposed than it would be um, in a cutaway in its case or whatever. So a lot of the times when I wanna show something like that is we'll make a cutaway like this, but the transaxle is a little bit more difficult to do because of the, uh, the complexity of the case and such. When you uh, strip it down, the five-speed uh, manual transaxle is pretty simple. Actually, uh, I would arguably more simple than, uh, than the traditional way. Um, right now, I don't have a way to mount the differential to the transmission. So um, in future, I'm going to try to find a, find a way to build a mount uh, to do that. But what makes this uh, manual transmission a transaxle is that it does have a di differential gear um, inside the transmission. And this is um, there for front wheel drive vehicles because of the um, space requirements that are just not available in a front wheel drive. The differential needs to be inside the transmission to, um, to accommodate those axles in a transverse mount. This uh, differential sits on what is the, the pinion gear here for the differential, which is the output of the transmission. So this um, differential would actually, this ring gear would be just sitting in here and it will turn with the transmission through all of its gears, whether it's in first, uh, fifth or reverse, okay? So for all intents and purposes, this uh, pinwheel here is our output gear and this one is our input gear. This is the input splines for the clutch. So that is our input. So if I come over here and, and spin this right now, I can hold the output because the transmission's in neutral. So when the, the engine and the clutch are disengaged and the engine's uh, rotating the transmission when it's in neutral, um, there is some spinning going on in the transmission, which I can show you right here. You gotta remember that this is gonna be held because the wheels of the car aren't turning. So you can now see all the moving parts of the transmission um, when it's in neutral. All right, let's get into this. First gear is the relationship between the smallest gear on the input shaft and the largest gear that you see here on the output shaft. And when the shift collar is shifted into place, like it is right there, you can see it's not in the middle anymore. It has locked this first gear to the output shaft. That will be first gear. So if I come back over here now, and we take a look at this black arrow here. I'm gonna turn it around until this white arrow makes it back to that location. So the white arrow is right here. The black arrow has been around once. The black arrow has been around twice. The black arrow has been around three times and almost four times. So that can give you a, an idea of what the gear ratio is for first gear. So it's almost four to one, three point something or other. And you could calculate the actual gear ratio for first gear by counting the number of teeth on this drive gear, because this gear is driving that one. The power is in the engine, drives the drive gear. This would then be the driven gear. So the way that you calculate gear ratios is you take the driven gear and you divide it by the drive gear. So the number of teeth on this gear by the number of teeth on this gear, and that'll give you the gear ratio for first gear, okay? If that's important to you. So um, we're gonna go back into neutral. All the shift forks have to be in neutral for you to have neutral, okay? And at any given time, there can only be one um, shifter that is in a gear or things just bind up and they don't work. They seize up. Second gear would be then, would be this next bigger gear from the smallest one. And again, a slightly smaller gear than the biggest one for there. 
I'm gonna shift that over into second gear. Okay. And we will check out this. I'm going to reference this uh, black line straight up right here, okay, with this white line here. So second gear, this black line and this white line, right? This has gone around once, it has gone around twice, and then just a little bit, okay? So you can see that my first gear ratio was three point something to one. And now my second gear ratio is gonna be two point something to one. Again, we could get the exact numbers by counting the number of teeth. We're not gonna do that. Only if you have a purpose to do that would we do it, okay? Moving on with the manual transaxle, okay? You're gonna see that the shift collar um, changes shafts here. That really doesn't change um, how the transmission works. It's just um, uh, accommodating these collars in such a tight place, right? You got the reverse idler up here and, and things, are, things are pretty tight in a manual transaxle. So we're gonna shift that shift collar back into third gear. And you can see that these gears are getting a little bit closer to the same size. They're not quite there yet, okay? But they're a little bit closer. We're gonna move this over here. I'm gonna use this white pointer with those white pointers. Looks like they're both on top, so that's great. I'm gonna go around once, and you can see the one turn almost made it all the way around. Okay, so it's about one and a half to one is that gear ratio for third gear. All righty. Over to fourth. See if I can show you fourth. There we go. It's a little sticky getting in there, but it works. This is just a salvage transmission um, that we had that I um, took out of a case and built this mount for. I think from time to time, the person's gonna have to oil um, the shifters just so it shifts nicely all the time, but it's been working really nice. Okay, what you're gonna notice here is that these gears do look like they're almost the same size, okay? And eyeballing it um, off camera, I can say that they almost look perfect, okay? So, we're gonna expect something close to a one-to-one -one ratio here. So we've got this one pointing straight up and we've got this output shaft just slightly to the left. Let's see how this turns out. Okay, you're gonna see that this output shaft on the right, I think it's not pointing as far left as what it was. We're gonna do this one more, one more time just to show that. Each time it goes around, this output shaft isn't quite making it around 100% around. And that's because um, the gear ratio isn't one to one, but something that's extremely close because the teeth numbers are only off by one number, okay? So if one tooth, uh, one gear had 30 teeth, the other one would have 29 teeth, okay? Just, just as an example, I didn't count the gear teeth yet. So um, in, these transmissions over here, fourth gear is when the shift collar locks the input shaft to the output shaft and it turns uh, in a one-to-one -one ratio. There's actually no gears um, making that ratio. It's just that the uh, input gear is locked to the output gear um, when you put it in the fourth. But on this um, five-speed manual transaxle, it actually has uh, two gears that have a relationship of fourth gear. So that's a little bit different than the traditional transmission. Um, I, I'm calling that traditional, but I'm not quite sure why. Maybe it's just because it's my era. Um, this is probably more traditional nowadays. All right, um, we've got all our collars in neutral. So we're gonna go to fifth gear, which is on the back, okay? And fifth gear is this bigger gear driving this smaller gear. So we have a drive gear that is bigger than its driven gear. It's the only gear in the transmission that's like that. So predictably, it should give us an overdrive situation where this one's gonna travel farther than this one, okay? So we're going with these two white arrows. And you're gonna notice that this white arrow came around already, and this one was only about three quarters of the way around. Okay, 
So this one turns around once, and this one goes about 1.3 um, or so, okay? So the gear ratio would be something like 0 0.8 to 1. And we're talking about how far this turns to make this go around once. So let's just do that. We're going to see how far this, this gear has gone when this goes around once. Okay, so it's been around once right there. And this one here has actually been three quarters of the way around. So I'm just gonna say the overdrive in this transmission is pretty close to that 0 0.75 uh, to one ratio. But uh, yeah, who knows for sure until we actually count the gear teeth. All right, back into neutral. Okay, reverse is kind of neat. This reverse idler has just been here in, in, uh, in exile here, if you will. Uh, waiting for his time to shine. So there's a shift fork up here that's going to engage just these uh, these straight bevel teeth. You can see that all these ones um, were the helical cut gears um, that are sideways. They don't uh, they mesh much better, wear much better. But the, since reverse actually has to slide in and out of engagement with the teeth, um, it has to be this design and. What you need to note about reverse is that this gear down here and this gear here currently are not in mesh with one another. Okay, you can see that I could turn that independently of each other. So when you add this idler gear in between them that joins the two, you're gonna get that reverse direction out of it. And reverse is gonna have a gear ratio. So let's find out what it is. I've got the white pointer sitting up here and I've got this black pointer here. Black pointer has gone around once. Black pointer has gone around twice. Black pointer has gone around three times. It looks like it's about three and a half times to get that output shaft around. Um, again, we do have to take into consideration that this transmission would also have a large gear ratio here with the differential carrier, but all transmissions have that. Okay, all transmissions have this carrier relationship. Um, let's just pick something other than reverse. We'll go into first. And uh, I really just need a way to hold this here. But then you can see in first gear how many turns of this input gear it would actually take to get this ring gear around. And it's, it's quite a few. We estimated this gear ratio here to be about four to one or so. Um, the gear ratio of a differential tends to be about four to one. So when you have two gear ratios, four to one for first gear, and then four to one from the pinion to the ring gear, you actually multiply those two numbers to get the overall gear ratio. So that gear ratio um, is about 16 to one. So for this big ring gear to turn once, the input shaft of this transmission is gonna to have to turn 16 times, okay? And I think you can see that that's actually the case here. It's really, really close. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed um, this manual transmission trainer. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned some things. Go ahead and comment if you have any questions about this and how it works. I'd be more than happy to help you out.